What's the difference between a tank and a self-propelled howitzer? So Beverly from Philadelphia asked me, what's the difference between a tank and a self-propelled howitzer, and why would you choose one over the other? Aren't they the same type of tract as in tanks, weapons platform? Maybe the self-propelled howitzer has a larger caliber gun, but other than that, what's the difference? So normally I'd put this in a roundup question, but I think it's important enough to answer on its own. Now, on the surface, these vehicles may look the same. They got a large gun, they got a turret, they got tracks. In fact, I made a whole video about how to identify the differences with something called the HATS method, where you look at the hull, armament, turret, and suspension. So let's talk about what you use a tank for. You use it to find, fix, close with, and destroy the enemy through a combination of mobility, precise, lethal, and overwhelming firepower, and devastating shock effect. This is paraphrased from the Army Armor Branch's mission. So it sounds like you're mainly going to be breaking through enemy lines, causing chaos in the rear and supporting friendly infantry. So what are some of the things you need on a vehicle to do that? Well, you need a flat shooting, relatively high velocity gun that allow you to fire the big heavy slugs that can punch through enemy armor. You also need a machine gun to take out enemy infantry. Now, you can't outshoot your sensors, so the range of the gun doesn't have to be that great, maybe 4,000, 5,000 meters. You need sensors such as thermal and infrared detectors so you can find the bad guys before they find you, and you need to be able to move fast. You also need shells that can take out a bunker in the field or make a hole in the building for friendly infantry to breach through. And you need to have heavy armor. I've often joked that if you can take a main gun round to the face, then you are a tank. So tanks need heavy armor to take the main gun round from another tank and keep going. Now remember, you are breaking through and causing chaos. That is the job of the tank. The mission of the field artillery is to destroy defeat, disrupt the enemy with integrated fires to enable maneuver commanders to dominate the unified land operations. Now, what would that look like? Well, you need a large caliber gun that can heave heavy shells up to 25, maybe even 40 kilometers. This means the gun needs to elevate very high because you might be shooting across mountain ranges like we did in Afghanistan. You don't necessarily need good sensors to detect the enemy. Someone else, a forward observer or a drone is doing that for you and telling you where to shoot. In fact, you might never even see your target. Note that you might fire rounds in the direct fire role. It's what's called a killer junior mission. That might happen if the enemy is attacking in your rear and they find you and attack you directly. So you set your ammunition to explode in midair like two seconds after it leaves the barrel. That way it turns into a giant shotgun. Uh, that was common in Vietnam when the bases were being overrun, but today it's so rare when a unit does it, it makes the newspapers. You also need to be able to move quickly. Think of uh, shooting a howitzer like turning on a flashlight in a dark forest. Everybody knows you're there. The adversary can sometimes detect your incoming rounds through radar and fire artillery back at you. This is called counter battery fire. So you need to be able to shoot your fire mission very quick and then leave. But you don't need to move as fast as a tank needs to move when they're assaulting enemy positions or fighting other tanks. You just need to be fast enough to get out of the way. And ideally, armor needs to be good enough to protect from fragments, since you're not intending to take a main gun round to the face. Putting a tank's heavy armor on a self-propelled gun would be a waste of money, because they should never be engaging enemy targets directly. Now, quick note, there are some cases where tanks are used as artillery. Sometimes you saw this during the Korean War, but it's more of a secondary capability. And modern tanks like the M1 Abrams, they just don't carry the kind of high explosive fragment uh, producing ammunition. And they're not fused for airburst that, that you would need to do artillery engagements. So in a nutshell, if you want to break through enemy defenses, you use a tank. If you want to shoot artillery long distances, you use a self-propelled gun. Now, my video for the hats method will be available after this one. Hey, if you want to support the channel, come on, get a Ryan Beth t-shirt from Bunker Branding, join my Substack for five bucks, or get a cameo greeting for the person in your life who loves the channel. And thank you so much for watching. Mr. President? Yeah, that's me. I'm the president, man. Hey, little tugboat, did someone drop your anchor? Uh, it's three o'clock in the morning, Mr. President. Well, it's not like you got some girl in bed with you to wake up. Listen, you freaking nerd. I've got a problem. It's my vice principal, man. You're who? Come on, man. Camilla. Miss Harris, if you're nasty. She's got a nerf day coming up, man. I, I gotta get her a presentation. Oh, Mr. President, I... 
How about a Ryan Webb t-shirt from Bunker Branding? I've got Think Outside the Bomb, Live Laugh Launch for Patriot and for High Mars, Department of the Boat People, Landmine Marker shirts, and even Hell on a Wire. A lot of these come in hoodies and stickers as well. Yeah, I'll get a Ryan Webb t-shirt from Bunker Branding. Macbeth, he saved the reputation of the tight house. Not the tight house, the, the tight house. The, the, the building, man, with the Rose Garden. Get with the program, man. Happy to help, Mr. President. And be sure to get yours at BunkerBranding.com.